We have started on a series of RDA training days going around the country to different writing centres who host our writing for disabled groups. We try to get as many volunteers as possible to attend and to encourage new volunteers to come. People can be sidewalkers, our leaders, and we have our coaches, and all attend so that we can strive to have best practice at our sessions for our clients. We teach our, or we train our leaders in good horsemanship, in ethical horsemanship, how to lead best, how to de-stress the horse, and how to warm them up and have them walk at best advantage to our riders. We train our sidewalkers to be supportive to our rider and to be there at all times providing physical and emotional support to them because they may be nervous or they may be physically challenged in a way that they're unable to support their body totally up there and to be reassured by having a sidewalker right there very close. Best practice and safety is our major concern at all times in the riding school. Uh, it can be a high risk activity, but with training and practice and practice, the horses become more accustomed and habituated to what we are doing and the people learn the skills that they need to keep our riders safe. And with good guidance, we hope that this continues. If a horse is a bit anxious or you want them to relax at the mounting block, you can just do a gentle swaying, no, no, motion, keeping a little bit of pressure on until they bring their head down a little. And it takes them, this is the training process, it takes them time, good, good. As soon as there's some give, give a scratch to her wither so that she knows you're getting what you want, okay. And you don't expect more than that on the first day. She's not, she's not used to somebody doing that all the time. But she's very, very gentle. So that's your relaxation mechanism for a horse who may be a little bit agitated while you're waiting to mount at the mounting block. Or if it, sometimes it takes a bit of time. So you want to get that nice, gentle relaxation. Now, we'll get the horse to warm up a little bit. So no tight turns. Walk on. And what we want here is that they respond to my aids immediately. Come on. Come on. Walk on. Walk on. Better for Julia. Okay, walk on. So you're getting the horse to take a few paces backwards after they've done some warm up because it's asking for their tummy muscles to work and for the back to come up. It's what riders, if you watch the show jumpers, they'll do a few paces back, won't they? When they've done their warm up. So she's good. Now I think we should all try a bit of leading. Okay. Everybody happy to lead? Which? When you're leading, you want the, to be holding the rope out here, preferably not to have tension on it. There's a lot of activity. And you want to be standing back at the shoulder here. For the warm up, you have a whip, we have one, uh, and you won't have a whip when you have the rider on. So you have to have them doing things as you want them by the time the rider gets on. Okay, who's my first volunteer? Anybody want? <laughs> Kathy's going to go, yeah. Julia has been leading her already and she's been quite successful. In walk, Kathy, stay in walk. What that belly side to side swing will give you is side bending and a bit of rotation of the spine because they happen together. And depending on the person you have on the horse, that's, that may be what you're looking for. 
and you see there's a nice even rope. She knows Kathy is, means what she said and she's gonna keep going for her. And a nice scratch at the end. Try a little trot on, on one rein. And again, the head is staying nicely positioned. It's moving very little really. And the tail is just loose and swinging. You see how the tail hair is going swish, swish, but it's, it's not swinging wildly. You don't want that, but you want it to be hanging loose and just flowing along. There's, the head is not to one side any more than the other. It's symmetrical. This is a, just a poly pad. It's nice and, nice and cushioned, inexpensive and very readily available. You can use a numna as well if it's big enough. Do you want to come over a little bit closer so you see what's happening with this? This is a roller. Again, an inexpensive roller. Julie, if you want to take the other roller out of the bag there, you can do the big heavy thing. Uh, it has all the bits for lunging on it. But it's, it's effective for, uh, as a therapeutic roller. There's a little bit of flexibility in the handle and it costs about 50 euros as opposed to 500. So there's a very big difference in outlay and uh, there's not a lot of difference in the result that you get. This also comes with two handles, which I don't have one of at the moment, which is the same as that. And that bit of flexibility in the handle, to me, I haven't had this one for very long, I've had it for about a year and a half, maybe. Um, but the flexibility in the handle means that when the rider bends forwards to get down, it gives with them a little bit. There's no give there. So some people can find it intrusive when they try to bend forwards. So I would be going towards this one as an option. And I would probably have a, a mixture between the two handled and the one handled. Okay, so we put the numna on first. You hold that for a sec for me. Taking note of where the sh horse's shoulder blade is, nicely padded here, and his wither. So with the saddle or the roller, rules, same rules apply. You don't want anything sitting over that shoulder blade. You want it to be just behind it. And you want enough room behind the, behind the roller for the person to sit. And just feel where it's, where it's right. The one thing that can happen a little bit with, with the poly pad, because it doesn't have a shape of its own, is that it tends to go back a little bit at the end. I think maybe a shaped numna might stay there more easily. Anybody use a shaped numna instead? Just think it might a little bit. And always check that both sides are symmetrical. And make sure the hair is lying down in the way it should be on the horse, because it'll be uncomfortable like our hair if we pulled it this way, it will also be uncomfortable. Now, we're ready for somebody to get on. Take the whip away. Now you have the horse warmed up, so he doesn't need whip. He's listening to your voice and he's listening uh, he knows exactly what you want, so he's going to do exactly what you say. The, the, these things should be in the loops. This is a full size. It does come in a, in a pony size, but I gather it's very small. I, for mounting, I'm going to stand either in front, is okay, or slightly to the side. We'll have a sidewalker here, please. Help, Grace. Mount up, okay. So you're going to come out to here, right? Now I'm going to just guide her up the step. And you're going to put one hand here and one hand down there, firmly there. Okay, you keep two hands on the reins if you need to. And on you get. Good girl. Now, Grace is just 
borderline to get on without the extra step, but she can do it. But if she was that height and the horse was that height and she wasn't able-bodied, she might need to be on the extra step because it's, it's just borderline. Now, we'll have a look, see if she's sitting up nice and tall. Push forwards a little bit on the, yeah. And let those legs hang down really loose. I'm gonna put my hand on your knee. I'll see on the other side, is that okay? I'll put my hand on your back. I'll do that now and then. Always tell them if you're gonna put your hand on them to help them to get, what it does is it gives them more sensory input into what you want them to do. It indicates where you want them to straighten up from. And you can also feel what they're doing. But ask them to do it first because they may well respond and do it. Okay, so Grace is sitting nice and straight. Her foot is not on the box, so you don't have to be concerned. If we had the extra step on, we would have to make sure that this foot, that she would either lift it up herself or that you would lift it up for her until she got off the box. Okay, so I always stand in front. So I'm stopping the body from toppling forwards in case that it might do that. And you can also, from that position, guide that leg over to the other side. And the sidewalker is on the other side, waiting to receive and able to guide that leg down to the other side again. Give them plenty of time. This horse is really, he's very, she's very compliant. She's not saying, oh, let's go now quickly. So she will wait. Some horses, they want to get moving on. And I think keep them happy once you're happy with the rider, maybe take them into the center if you want to make any adjustments, just make the adjustments there, okay? Now, are you happy? Can we have another sidewalker just right here waiting to support Grace as she meanders by? Ask her if she's ready to walk on. Now, one sidewalker is going to interact with Grace. Uh, the leader is purely there to lead the horse, and we'll go through all of this. Uh, she's purely in charge of the horse. She has no input to the rider. She will listen if the sidewalker tells her something or asks her to do something, or she will listen to the coach, and she will comply with what they want to do. If the sidewalker feels that Grace is now tired and she needs to get off, or she, you need a breather just to get into the center to adjust something, the sidewalker will ask the leader. Otherwise, the horse is the priority for the leader. The horse's welfare and that the horse is walking at a good pace to give the movement that she knows is required for the rider. Okay, so when you're ready to walk on, if now, if Grace is not verbal, if she can't say anything to me, I will ask her to tap when she's ready to go. And if she doesn't tap, can I take your hand? I will help her to tap, tap to go, okay? And likewise, we'll go raise the hand to halt, okay? Or we'll say, walk on if you can. Yeah, you're ready to walk on because they will ask you. Okay, ready to go? Walk on. Okay, don't hold the reins. Now, nice pace, look ahead of you, don't look at the ground. Now, you're gonna come over with me up step and I'm gonna guide her up the step. A little bit too much of a gap, but you will manage yeah, that. Right. So you're going to put your left foot into the stirrup. You're going to put this hand. No, no, that, mm -hmm. that hand's not going there. This hand here, the other hand over there. Kathy is holding the stirrup and you're going to get on and you're still going to be two. And I'm here so I can guide her round. Still a bit too short. Huh? A little bit. They're okay. I mean, I like long legs. The, the shorter the stirrups are, yeah. it, the more it pushes the person back onto the back of the saddle. So we want long legs sitting in the centre of the saddle so that they're sitting as close as possible to being over the centre of gravity of the horse. And the reason for that is because that's the easiest place for the horse to carry you and we have to facilitate them as much as possible. If we're carrying something heavy and it's out here, it's a big struggle. If we tuck it in close to our body, over our centre of gravity, over our base, then it's much easier to carry it. The horse's back is, its weakest point is back here at its lumbar spine, or this place. Uh, so we want our forwards over and that's, it is easier to get you in that position on the pad down on the saddle. Now, uh, the, the center of gravity of the horse, which is above the elbow and back a little, 
changes with whatever they're doing are changes with the amount of collection of the horse. So that, that's why saddles are different shapes. It's one reason why they're different shapes, is to get the rider over that center of gravity when they're doing their, their stuff, it moves forwards in jumping, uh, and racing it must move way forward, because it's very much on the, the forehand. So your aim is to be over the center of gravity. Now she's quite comfortable, can we have another sidewalker? We're going to walk forwards and we're going to go into the center to adjust the stirrups. Okay. okay, now, would you like to dismount from the saddle? We haven't had anybody else dismount from the saddle, so you're going to do your hold, your proper hold. And we have our sidewalker on the other side. If you want to come closer, you can. You're going to lean forwards, head down to that side. And over. swing this leg over. I'm going to take here. Yeah, that's okay. And slide. And bend the knees. Nice bounce when you come down. And make sure uh, that your rider with a disability, either intellectual or physical, that when they come down, you tell them, and straighten your knees up again. Because they may forget and keep going.